Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We're doing some research for the month of March, and we're talking about TikTok, which is an app that can be used on your phone. And I'm sure you all know about that.、Uh, I guess if you're under the age of、uh, 40 or so, or 50,、uh, you probably all have it installed on your phones. I do not have this on my phone. I did not want to become addicted, which is kind of what we're talking about today. This addiction to TikTok, which is referred to as TikTok brain. Yeah, it's not a good thing. I was just saying to Tom before we started, if I had young kids, I wouldn't let them have TikTok.、Um, as your brain's still developing and growing, you have to protect it as much as you can. And some of these programs are trying to get you addicted to their social media、um, programs. So be careful.、Uh, not everybody out there is、uh, trying to help you. So yeah, I know it's popular, especially with the young kids.、Uh, they're short videos, but、um, yeah, we're gonna kind of talk about some of the downsides, some of the things that are not so good about TikTok, and not just TikTok, Tom.、Yeah. Uh, I was on Instagram the other day. I had deleted it from my phone because they've just put on all these ads.、Mm. You know, you usually follow people. If I could just see the people I follow, that would be fine because I don't follow many. It's just my family and close friends. But they add all these commercials and ads and other videos I don't care about.、Mm. So it just gets annoying. I'm no longer on Facebook because ugh, I don't like that either. Well, they might、uh, you know offer the option of paying them a monthly fee to get rid of those advertisements or something like that. But、uh, yeah, I'm with you. I don't like to use too many of these applications. Yeah, there is already、uh, a lot of Time during the day that I'd rather be doing other things. It's than, a waste、uh, of time. Yeah, being a zombie and scrolling my phone all <laughs> day long, like some people. But、uh, let's get to it here. Let's talk about what TikTok brain is and how it affects you. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson now one time. We've all been there. You start scrolling on TikTok during a quick study break, and suddenly an hour vanishes. Welcome to the TikTok brain phenomenon. Although it's not an official medical term, this expression is used to explain how TikTok captures our attention and influences behavior, particularly among young people. At the core of TikTok's addictiveness is its algorithm, which measures users' preferences and the time spent on individual posts. It aims to recommend further content. That matches users' interests and keeps them engaged for as long as possible. Some psychologists suggest that TikTok functions as a dopamine machine. Dopamine, a neurotransmitter released when our brain is anticipating rewards, creates pleasure and encourages us to seek more. Because of TikTok's mechanism, users experience a consistent release of dopamine. As they scroll for the next interesting video, potentially leading to addictive behavior. Accompanying this usage pattern are downsides, like weakened short-term memory and focus. Research suggests that excessive TikTok use can disrupt your ability to concentrate on tasks, requiring extended attention. The platform conditions your brain to favor bite-sized visual content. Making it challenging to focus on longer text-based tasks like homework or reading. This is particularly harmful for children and teens, whose brains are still developing the ability to sustain prolonged focus. Aside from TikTok, platforms like YouTube and Instagram are also adopting the addictive features of short video applications to attract young viewers. To address this issue. Some social media companies are initiating measures to help younger users manage their time more effectively. TikTok, for example, sends reminders to users to take a break, stretch, or go for a walk. While social media can be entertaining, don't let it dominate your brain. Stay aware, establish boundaries, and you can strike a balance between digital enjoyment. And real-world responsibilities.
Okay, guys, let's dive in. It's our research unit, so we're going to be talking about some research that scientists have been doing on the effects of certain、uh, social media programs, and this one, of course, is TikTok, and how it affects our brain, especially if you're young and your brain is still developing, how it can affect you. For the rest of your life, actually. So let's dig in here. We've all been there. When you see this phrase, oh, we've all been there, or we've all done it, or we've all seen it, it just means it's an experience that most people can relate with. Whatever follows. So we've all been there. You know, when you wake up late. And you find out you didn't hear your alarm, and you run, and you miss your bus, or you're late for work. We've all been there. It's an experience that a lot of people can share or have gone through. So, what is this experience? Well, you start scrolling on TikTok during a quick study break. Maybe you're doing your homework in the library, and you give yourself, you know, a, a five or ten minute break, which is fine. And suddenly, before you know it. An hour vanishes. The time goes because you get kind of fixated.、Uh, fixated just means you're really focused on something and can't、um, pay attention to other things. Fixated on something,、um, and suddenly the time's gone. If you scroll, it just means nowadays this verb means to move information up and down on your phone or a computer so that you can read it. To scroll, scrolling. Right, those、uh, ancient Chinese paintings that you can put on the wall—they roll up. Those are scrolls,、mm -hmm. and so we are using this as a verb to talk about, you know,、uh, swiping the screen up and down on your smartphone or using the mouse on your PC to look up and down on the content、uh, from your computer program or whatever it is you're looking at. And we're saying an hour vanishes, it disappears, it flies by. Well, welcome to the TikTok brain phenomenon. So that's what we're calling this. This is a phenomenon or something. That happens, and we're calling it TikTok brain. I guess maybe somebody came up with this term somewhere, but it seems to have been accepted by a lot of people. So, because we're naming it TikTok brain, it doesn't just apply to TikTok. This is some sort of phenomenon, something we're seeing out there in the world. And a lot of、uh, other programs、uh, fall into this TikTok brain phenomenon. It's not a, an official medical term. It hasn't been adopted by、uh, scientists, psychologists, or、uh, you know therapists out that have there that are seeing this. It's just an expression that quickly sums up a problem that we've been seeing、uh, amongst those who are using these.、Uh, TikTok programs, or they're spending a lot of time on their phone watching very short videos.、Mm, exactly, it's a good way to pass the time. Of course, people have to take the bus somewhere, or they're waiting for friends or something. So, of course, you pull out the phone and、uh, see what's happening on TikTok, and you get all these short little videos to help you pass the time. And we're saying it influences your behavior, and your behavior, of course, is how you act or how you behave. And yes, indeed,、uh, this can. Influence young people.、Uh, it can affect、uh, their mood. It can affect、uh, their attention span and things like that. It just basically、uh, be influences how they behave from day to day. I want to mention behavior is tricky because、uh, you've probably seen it sometimes with an S on the end. But if you're just talking about one person's actions or a group,、um, we use the non-count version. For example, if you're a parent and you go to school and you're、um, Child's teacher says, "Oh,、um, their behaviors have been very, very good. That's wrong. So a child's behavior includes all of their action, and behavior isn't positive or negative. You have to add an adjective to it. Oh, he displays very good behavior, or he displays very bad behavior, or he got in trouble for his、um, bad behavior at school. So remember, behavior is typically non-count." Right, or sometimes a prisoner can get out early because of good behavior.、Uh, they were good prisoners, and、uh, they could be released earlier than they were supposed to be from a jail or a prison. Yeah, it does happen sometimes. And it goes on to say, at the core of TikTok's addictiveness 
is its algorithm, which measures users' preferences and the time spent on individual posts. So this is at the core of this addictiveness.、Uh, that's the state of being addicted to something.、Uh, if you're addicted to something, you want to have it, you want to use it all the time. You could be addicted to gambling, for example, or you could say you have a gambling addiction, or you could be、uh, addicted to smoking, or you could be addicted to heroin or something like that. Shopping online. Right, you could be addicted <laughs> to chocolate or whatever. Too, oh yeah, lots of stuff. Or hot pot, especially at this time of year.、Mm. And、uh, of course, it does influence your addictiveness. And、uh, at the core of this is the algorithm. Okay, that's kind of a computer program. It's a set of instructions.、Uh, it kind of recognizes your behavior and it saves it, and then it makes suggestions in the future based on your history. You know, I looked this up, and I just wanted to mention. Nowadays, we always use it for computer、uh, programs, right? How a computer sets up a list of things、um, that the computer is supposed to follow. It's in a very、uh, special order. It's in a fixed order, but it's not just used for computers. It can be any set of instructions that、um, are being followed to produce a particular.、Um, A、result. It's usually for a mathematical problem, but nowadays, when I see algorithm, I just automatically assume it's some sort of computer program. But、uh, they're being used all around because we don't hire enough people to watch everybody, and they're, you know, they're. Their surfing habits, I guess you could say, online. So what happens is this unknown、uh, computer algorithm sees what you watch, and then they use that and give you more videos based on what they see you are interested in or what you may have、uh, looked on to briefly. So yeah, so we've got all these algorithms. Algorithms and they measure users' preferences. A preference is just a choice. If you have a choice of things, your preference is the one that you choose. You like something better than another thing.、Uh, some men prefer have a preference for blondes. Some women have a preference for、um, guys that are funny.、Uh, those are some、um, just some. I guess examples of preferences, and we all have preferences when we're online. Do you spend more time listening to、uh, funny videos, or do you like to listen to politics, or do you like to listen to、um, informative things? There are just lots of different preferences that people have. Sometimes I get it wrong. For some reason, recently I keep getting posts on Facebook about Kiss, the band Kiss. Oh, interesting.、Uh, I may have clicked on something <laughs> before, just one time, out、Hard、of curiosity、yeah. or something like that. So they thought, "Oh, this guy likes Kiss." So they keep sending me these posts about Kiss. I think, well, I think one was enough, folks. I was just <laughs> kind of curious, but、uh, yes, it measures your preferences and it also measures the time that you spend on those posts, and they determine what you like and what you don't like if. You like to watch,、uh, you know, cat videos or something. Then they'll make all these suggestions with cute little kitties、mm -hmm. uh, licking each other or doing things like that, being naughty. And it aims to recommend further content that matches users' interests and keeps them engaged for as long as possible. So it does two things here. It wants to、uh, give you content or things to look at because you might enjoy them, but it also wants to keep your attention. Okay, it wants to keep your attention as long as possible, and that's probably. What causes your addiction? Now we've got、uh, some psychologists who have some suggestions. But first, guys, we're going to take a quick break, listen to our Chinese teacher, and then we'll be back. 听众朋友，大家好，我是安娜。我们今天要带大家来看 TikTok， 才怪 ！TikTok 每次滑滑好久，稍微滑一滑呢，随便的五分钟就变成五十分钟了。为什么会这样呢？这个是太恐怖了，好像都会上瘾。哎，我们今天这个文章其实真的对大家来说蛮重要的，因为读者应该都还蛮年轻的，我们的脑袋还是会受到我们看的东西所影响，所以今天这个文章一定要很用力的看一下。不过我们设计成篇章结构，那。篇章结构主要就还是要看文章的结构啊，所以当我们要做这种题型的时候，先看一下选项，因为选项其实就会暗示你大概这句话会出现在文章的哪些地方。比如说像 A 选项 ，A 选项啊，在 TikTok 逗点之后看到 For example， 就知道 A 选项应该前文会提到某一些重点，而这个重点呢，是以 A 选项举了一个例子。
。他举什么例子呢？哦，比如说像 TikTok 就会提醒大家啊，稍微休息一下啊，伸伸懒腰啊，或者是走一走之类的。言下之意是 A 选项前文应该说的是，呃，某一些这个呃这个软体或串流平台啊，它可能会希望大家滑很久之后稍微动一下，免得一直滑下去不好。好，类似这样子的一个文艺。好，那 B 选项呢？先看一下 B 选项，先仔细的读一下，我们会发现 ，it 后面加上的 that 并不是什么虚主词的句型哎，因为其实 B 选项说的是 it aims to recommend further content。这件东这个东西主要的目的就是要推荐更深入的、更进一步的内容。后面的 that 是限定用法的关系子句，而 that 呢后面加上的动词，那个内容是要符合你的兴趣，然后让你一直不断的一直去看 engaged。所以 B 选项这边的 it 不是虚主词哦 ，it 指的是某一个什么样的东西，或者是某一种工具。他就会去推荐你再看其他类似的影片，你喜欢影片的意思。好，再来 C 选项啊，我们看到后面有提到特别有 also 这个东西。那 C 选项一开始既然是除了 TikTok 之外，其他像是 YouTube 跟 Instagram 也会采取这种 the。Addictive 关键在这个 the 啊，限定用法的这个 the。如果我看到 the 的话，这种令人上瘾的 feature 就表示前文有提到，前文一定提到哦，有这个很多的这些串流平台啊，他们就会让你上瘾哦，一直看一直看。所以除了 TikTok 之外，像 YouTube 跟 Instagram 同样也采取了 the addictive features 这样子的一个。特征或者是所谓的功能。好，再来最后的 D 选项 ，research 有研究啊，他就说哦 ，excessive 如果过度的用 TikTok 的话，就可以 disrupt your ability， 让你的能力得受损啦，然后你就不能 concentrate， 你不不能专心啦。那 D 选项基本上就是在讲坏处，而且真的是有研究显示哦。那这个坏处的话，可能会放在文章的第二段还是第三段的部分呢？好，接着我们就赶快回过头来看一下文章喽。那文章啊，它一开始当然一定会先讲一下一个情况嘛，或者是解释一个 what 什么之类的。反正总而言之，我们就是滑 TikTok 或看什么东西，看了五个五分钟就五个小，这个五十分钟就过去了。那这个就是所谓的 the TikTok brain。第一段的第二句要稍微看一下，双引号的 TikTok Brain 几乎算是一个专有名词喽。这个 TikTok Brain 到底是什么样的现象呢？第三句虽然不是医学术语了哈，第一段第三句这个词语其实是用来解释 TikTok 怎么样吸引我们的注意，影响我们的行为。所以接下来第二段就很重要了，就要说明一下 TikTok 它到底。怎么样让我们一直不断的滑下去呢 ？The TikTok Brain Phenomena 是如何来去创造的？在第二段的第一句当中，我们先看到关键词，有没有看到那个 addictiveness？ 有一个上瘾这个东西。当你看到这个词的时候，你一定会很想让第一题的答案是 C， 对不对？可是 C 选项它里面的内容，它是说除了 TikTok， 还有其他的平台。所以其实，在第二段的第二句。也就是第一题这个地方，跟第一句，我们还是要仔细看一下它的内容哦。他说 ，TikTok 它其实有一个演算法，那、啊、这个 algorithm 就是我们的先行词，逗点之后的 which 一直到句尾，我们可以左右挂号起来。好，这个演算法怎么样呢 ？Which measures 它会去计算呢、啊？大家的 preference 就是你的偏好嘛，你喜欢看的东西，然后看。到这里的时候，你要判断一下 B 跟 C 选项到底哪一个比较适合，因为 C 选项讲的是其他的平台哦。那 B 选项有一个代名词叫做 it it 这个东西，它的目的就是要再找到更深入的内容，然后你才会有更有兴趣的影片跑出来。跟刚才我们看到第二段的第一句提到的这个 algorithm 这个演算法，这个演算法它到底是要做什么呢？它就是要呼应到了第一题答案 B it， 主要就是希望能推算出来到底你喜欢看什么，然后不断的推影片给你。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back, guys. We're talking about how TikTok brain affects you. So we kind of set up the scenario here. You start、um, scrolling on your phone, looking at some TikTok videos, and before you know it, a lot of time has passed away. You've wasted time looking at just crazy videos, and. There's actually there are psychologists and scientists out there that can see that、um, watching short videos that don't last very long can actually affect our brains, especially developing brains. Right, and of course, some people suspect that this is TikTok、uh, doing this on purpose. That they want to get you addicted,、yep. and they want to make you weak, and they want to control you in the future.、Uh, yeah, that might be something you want to take into consideration if you you know swipe your phone too often looking at TikTok videos. But again,、uh, they try to keep you engaged for as long as possible, so that you keep watching content, and then they can sell advertising to advertisers or whatever. And some psychologists again suggest that TikTok functions as a dopamine machine.、Uh, dopamine is kind of a chemical in the body that gets you addicted to things, and if you have this thing, it makes you feel better.、Uh, like some people produce a lot of dopamine if they're climbing mountains or something like that. It produces a lot of this dopamine or or adrenaline. Into that can get you excited as well, but yeah, it's a dopamine machine. It produces this dopamine in the body, and you get addicted. Yeah, so it's something. If you're doing something enjoyable, it, it usually feels good because of this dopamine, and it's、uh, described. It's a hormone, but it's described as a neurotransmitter. Um, I looked up something kind of just easy. What an easy definition is, but these neurotransmitters are just chemical messengers. They send messages from neurons to different parts of your body to tell you how to feel. Dopamine is one of the、uh, hormones we we actually really enjoy. It makes us feel good, and when we do something good,、um, our body or we we like what we're doing. Our body rewards us with this dopamine feeling. So it's released when our brain is. Anticipating rewards. What's a reward? Well, if you do something good,、um, you get something back, right? So maybe you get to get all your homework done, and you get a reward for that. Maybe you get to、uh, play on your phone an extra half an hour. Or、um, one time, I lost my wallet in a cab, and a taxi driver. Brought it back to me, and I gave him a cash reward for being so honest and wonderful to help me. So that's what a reward is, and this dopamine creates pleasure and encourages us to keep doing what we're doing because it feels good. So because of TikTok's mechanism, how it's set up, how it works, users experience a consistent release of dopamine as they scroll for the next interesting video. Potentially, potentially, perhaps leading to addictive behavior. Addictive just means something that、um, usually it's a substance, you know,、mm. like drugs, bad drugs. If you're taking it, if it's addictive, your body starts to begin to need it,、mm. and if you don't have it, you don't feel well.、Um, some other things can be addictive. Some people like、uh, extreme sports because they love how that makes them feel, but that can be addictive too, where it gets out of control and you no longer have control of your life. So you don't want that. Yeah, addictive is the adjective.、Uh, the phrase we often use is to be addicted to something.、Uh, like、uh, you could be addicted to、uh, Korean soap operas or something like that, or、yeah. you could be addicted to heroin or cocaine or something like that.、Uh, it does happen sometimes. And addiction, of course, is the noun. I have an addiction to Korean soap operas. Or he's a drug addict, or、mm. you know something you're addicted to. So we would call someone an addict. Exactly, that's a, a derivative of the word addiction or addictive, etc. Now, moving on to the next paragraph here, it says accompanying this usage pattern, going along with it,、uh, are downsides like weakened short-term memory and focus. So these are downsides,、uh, which are the disadvantages of something. I guess when you compare things, the upside is、uh, this advantage, and the downside, of course, is the disadvantage. You need or to... or pros and cons. We use、you、those too, right?、That. Pros up. Cons bad. 
And we're talking about this usage pattern. Usage is the noun. It's just when you do something, when you use something.、Uh, we often use this when we talk about、uh, time spent、uh, on something. Like water usage needs to be reduced because there's not enough water in the reservoirs, or something like that. Or electricity usage increases during the summer because everybody has their AC units on. And here, of course, we're talking about usage of TikTok. And if you do it too much, you have a short Short-term memory loss—you just can't remember things and you can't focus on things, and maybe you're kind of、uh, fadai, you know, kind of spacing off. Yeah, see a lot of that. So we've got research that suggests that excessive—excessive excessive meaning way too much of something. Uh, excessive TikTok use can disrupt your ability to concentrate on tasks, especially those requiring extended attention. So this is hurting our our kids, especially because most of the time, if you really want to develop a really good、um, brain and、uh, do well in school and go on to do well in your career, you have to focus for extended、uh, periods of time. And kids are sort of you know kind of tuning out after a while. Because they're not used to paying attention for long spans,、uh, longer periods of time. So to concentrate just means to focus on something. If you're concentrating, usually you turn off music and you do all you can to not be interrupted, so that you can、uh, learn something or study something or even pay attention to someone who's talking to you. Absolutely, and the platform or this application conditions your brain to favor bite-sized. Visual content.、Uh, visual means having to do with what you see,、uh, what your eyes can interpret, and it makes it challenging to focus on longer text-based tasks like homework、mm. or reading. So yeah, people would probably prefer watching TikTok videos to actually reading a novel. Oh yeah, this is particularly harmful for children and teens. Why? Well, their brains are still developing the ability to sustain prolonged focus. To sustain something means to Keep it going. So, if you want to make something to continue to exist for a long time,、uh, you have to just maintain it, sustain it.、Um, sometimes we talk about it's hard to sustain economic growth. We usually have an economy that grows for a while and then it doesn't. So, we want to sustain these kids.、Uh, their their focus. Prolong means to make something longer to extend. So, moving to the final paragraph. Aside from TikTok, of course, we've got platforms like YouTube, who now have their short little clips, their video clips that are popular, and Instagram has those short little movies as well. They're also adopting the addictive features of short video applications to attract young viewers. I get irritated by the short videos that pop up,、mm. but our our youth are. Are used to them, and they think those are great. I tend to listen to long-form videos that last an hour, so I can learn something. But、uh, yeah, we've got other platforms, of course, that are using the same technique. I'm guilty of this as well. I tend to watch YouTube videos, but most of the videos are in landscape orientation,、oh. and they have these short ones which are in portrait orientation, which you can view on your phone. And they're doing that again in response to TikTok and、uh, trying to attract more users, etc., etc. And it can be addictive. And to address this issue, some social media companies are initiating measures or starting these measures to help younger users manage their time more effectively. So these applications、uh, realize this is a problem, and they don't want、uh, all these young people to have trouble in their education or in their life. So they're actually trying to do something about it. Now, while social media can be entertaining, of course, don't let it dominate your brain. If something dominates some, something or someone else. It means it's stronger, more powerful. I could say, for an example, Google dominates the search en engine industry.、Um, so they're trying to break it up. Currently, actually, they're in court right now in the U.S. But、uh, you don't want to let this dominate your brain. You always want to be stronger than other things outside your body. Don't let anything dominate、um, you and how you act. So you need to stay aware. Be aware of what's going on. Don't let the time just fly. 
You know, may, maybe set your alarm clock. Give yourself ten minutes. Let your alarm go off, and get back to work. Establish boundaries. Maybe when you go outside, don't always take your phone.、Um, even outside, when people are walking out in nature, they have to be looking at their phones. Maybe leave your phone at home. But you need to strike a balance. Find something that makes sense in your life、uh, between digital enjoyment and real world responsibility. Things you really have to pay attention to to be successful in life. I'm sorry, Stephanie. Did you say something? <laughs> I was just playing on my phone. I know. I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> But in any case, that does bring us to the end of our discussion for today. It's time now to listen to our Chinese teacher who just put her phone down. 所以接下来啊，到第三句的时候才会说哦，有些心理学家啊，他就继续讲了。基本上好像是一个 dopamine machine 啊，就是一个多巴胺的一个机器。那这个多巴胺到底是什么东西呢？第二段第四句我们稍微看一下，因为它有一个简化的关系子句，当然就会说明一下啦。因为这种专有名词后面通常都会带一个同位语啦，或者是非线定用法补充说明的关系子句。这个第四句我们看到 dopamine。逗点之后有一个同位语 ，a neurotransmitter， 它其实是一个神经传导物质。release 的这里一直到后面逗点的地方，我们可以左右挂号。那其实它省略的是 which 或 that 跟 be 动词的 is。什么时候被释放呢？就是当我们很期待一些回馈 rewards 的时候，头脑会这个。传送出来的一种神经传导物质，所以 TikTok 它就是用这种机制啊，让我们上瘾。好，那当然，既然会让我们上瘾的话，就不太好啊。所以到了第三段，就开始会有一些不好的地方出现。第三段一开始他就说了，伴随着这种模式，就是一些 downsides 不利之处。好，比如说 we can short shorten memory 哦，短期记忆就不好啦，甚至是 focus 你的注意力也不好啦。所以到了第二题的时候，如果我们选的是。D 选项，我们刚刚不是说 D 选项有一些坏处吗？会让你的这个能力不好啦，不能够专注啦之类的。上下文还蛮通顺的耶。不过接下来我们看到第三段啊，后面的第三句要特别注意一下。其实这个平台啊，它是训练你的大脑偏好更简短的一些视觉内容，所以基本上就比较不能够专注。但是这句话其实有一个分词构句，因为第三段的第三句啊，第一个动词是 condition。那第二个动词本来应该在逗点之后的 make， 那逗点之后本来应该是 and makes， 那连接词省略之后就是变成 making。那为什么要用分词构句？其实有时候两个动词其实根本就是同时间发生，或者是同样的作用，这时候就不用分成两个动词嘛。所以这时候句子的简化是有它的必要性。不过第三段的第四句逗点之后有一个 whose brain， 这个地方也可以抓出来哦。有时候我们对于冠带的所有格并不是很清楚，那是因为啊，我们对于名词中文比较没有这样子的一个概念。总而言之，在英文当中，如果看到名词 brain， 例如在这里的 brain， 我们就会知道它到底是 a brain 还是 the brains， 还是 those brains， 还是 whose brains 呢？名词前面会有一个现词的概念，所以在这里为了连接逗点前后的句子，又再加上这个 brain 是谁的 brain。所以就会有一个冠带所有格 whose 出现。好，那当然到最后三跟四，答案一个是 C， 那第四题呢，答案则是 A。因为一开始我们在这个句子一开段落一开始的时候，要先讲除了 TikTok 之外，其他的平台啊，其实也会让大家尽量不要上瘾啦。好，甚至讲到。在更深入的时候，最后一题的第四题才会说，例如要提醒大家如何如何。文章讲到里面越后面就会越仔细越具体，所以这个呢，文章呢到了第三跟四的时候，答案就会是 C 跟 A 啦。好，总而言之呢，今天文章的重点还是希望大家不要太花太多时间去划这些东西，然后要特别注意，还是要提升自己的专注力才是最重要的哦。我是安娜，我们下次见哦。Okay, that's it for today, everybody. Thank you for joining us, and please join us again next time. And、uh, yeah, spend time listening to our program rather than、uh, playing with those TikTok videos.、Uh, do it sometimes, but、uh, do it in moderation. From all of us here at English Digest, my name is Tom. I'm Stephanie. Goodbye. Bye.